Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's ready because football season is here. Football season is here. Teams are working on their game plans for uh, the season and things. And since we have so many Eagle fans that are here pounding their chests and telling us how much of a failure the Cowboys are, how much they suck and stuff, we have to have our Eagles report. Now, tomorrow I'll be on with Dan Salio at 3.30, I believe. I, I think I'll be on there. We'll see. He's been having a lot of, you know, big time guests. I know I'm just a Dallas Cowboy YouTuber. I'm a nobody and this, that, and the other. So it, it's all good. Be that as it may, Eagle fans always say I'm just a hater. Now, for me, I've been looking at the Eagles, and I'm going to say that this game in Brazil is actually really bad for the Eagles. One, they're losing one of their home games, which basically is always a home field advantage for them because their fans are crazy. You guys know you are. But to go to Brazil on the road and this count as a home game could hurt the team. And the difference of last year, Cowboys beat the Eagles by one game. So this game is critical for the Eagles because you now only have eight home games left. So that's the first thing I want to say. And I don't believe, I, I honestly believe that the shift from Kellen Moore to the offensive coordinator, that there's going to be a learning curve. And I still feel like Kellen Moore and Jalen Hurts are like water and oil trying to mix together. Kellen Moore is more of a pass-happy guy. To me, with Jalen Hurts, my knock on him is, with as great an offensive line as he has, he gets happy feet and wants to leave the pocket real quick. If that first read's not there, he's ready to run. And I don't see that those things are going to necessarily go together. I look at it and I say that the Eagles' defense, that they don't have as many playmakers on the front you know, line, the pass rushers, with losing Hassan Reddick. I still say there's questions on their linebackers. And yes, they did address their, their cornerbacks by drafting two guys, but now we're talking about the possibility of two rookies playing on a defense that has a new defensive coordinator that was 31st in pass defense. So to me, that's where I look at it and say, I honestly think the Eagles are going to be 8-9. and nine. And that's basically, I'm taking the under on the Eagles with Bet US because I honestly believe that they are not going to be as good as they were. And Eagle fans, y'all go after me and just tell me how stupid I am. Most of the publications and the shows all say that the Eagles are going to win the division. And that may be true. It may be true. But I honestly feel like from the Eagles hitting the peak of the Super Bowl, Generally speaking, what happens to teams that lose in the Super Bowl that aren't Kansas City is they slowly get worse. And I feel like that is the case. You know, and when people go through, and this isn't to try and throw shade necessarily at Jalen Hurts, they'll go through and they'll say, well, you know, two years ago, he was like an MVP candidate and he had a great season. And we always assume that people are going to get back to what they were before. But let me bring up, here, this is Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, his second year, was unbelievable. 5,014 yards, 38 TDs, 15 interceptions. But since that time, he's been steadily kind of going down. Last year, he was injured a bit and things. But you see, you know, the, the second year where he played, uh, excuse me, third year, where he played uh, 17 games, he ended up just dropping about 300 yards, but his touchdown percentages dropped over 2%. So the question is, is, is it the Justin Herbert of year two, or is he settled back down to the real Justin Herbert and just had one great year? And that's how, what I felt about Jalen Hurts. But here's an interesting thing right here, that the spicy take on the Bill Barnwell show, let me pull this on over here. This is interesting because their discussion is the Eagles not making the playoffs. Let's listen in because we always like this kind of stuff. And I don't believe a lot of people agree with this. Might even be a spicy take by Mina standards. By Dominique standards, this would be more of a mild take. <laughs> My take here is about the Philadelphia Eagles, uh -huh. a team that does not inspire any sort of criticism, any sort of controversy year after year. 
I believe, and this is very brave of me to say, the team that could not beat anybody in the second half of 2023 is not going to make it to the postseason this Ooh. year. Ooh. Jeez. What do you think? Medium? Wow. Too spicy? That's definitely. I mean, that's, that's, that's spicy. medium on that's the spicy. spicy end of medium to me. I think, and maybe it's just wishful thinking, but like I can explain away their issues last year by pointing to the coaching staff, which is very, and, and injury luck, which like those coaches are coaches that are, there's a first year offensive coordinator, and then there's Matt Patricia, which Matt mm-hmm. Patricia, everyone loves to point to him and blame. Like those <laughs> are easy issues to point to as a problem. And you can go back a, a season before that and see how high functioning a lot of these same players were. And I guess they, they've lost Jason Kelsey, which is somewhat of a concern, but they've added Saquon Barkley, which makes them a very scary offense. And then the defense still has a lot of really talented guys, not as deep as they have been historically on the defensive line, but a lot of talent on the defensive line. And then they address their secondary issues in the draft, which we know draft doesn't always pan out, but they went and got uh, Quinn Yon and Cooper DeGene to help out in the secondary. So it's hard for me to imagine that he completely missed the playoffs. So I, I give you spicy for that. On, 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 on Dominique's show, he gave like a three-minute explanation of why he was not as high mm-hmm. in the Eagles as he first expected. That was basically that same conversation repeated, which is why Dominique was going at so far at length to give that, that conversation on this show, which I appreciate, Dominique. Thank you. No problem. I think it. it's... I think it is a spicy take, but I also think it's one I find myself increasingly agreeing wow. with. There, um, ooh. I, I just, I don't, whenever I'm like trying to put together my seven for the playoffs, mm. I find it really hard to keep the Eagles out, but I also find it really hard to put the Eagles in, if that makes sense. Wow. And usually when I put them in, it's not because I, I it's not as a wild card. It's more often just that I think the Cowboys regress and they win the division, but um, this team, I still think, has a lot of flaws because I think a lot of their problems last year weren't just about coaching. Mm-hmm. I think it's very easy to point fingers and, and correctly at coaching on both sides of the ball. Wow. But what I saw from the defense last year, that was not just coaching. I mean, major, major holes, aging secondary. Dominic's point, they addressed that, but... It's a lot to put on some pretty young players on that side of the ball. Defensive line is thinner than it's been in recent years. Linebacker group is still a giant fat question mark, in my opinion. Uh, and then offensively, uh, JC, I think people are sleeping on the JC Kelsey thing, yes. man. Like, yes. I, 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 it's probably just because he's a center, and this isn't just tush push. You know, it yeah. isn't just that he handled protections and all that. He's not a normal center. He's yeah, arguably he's the greatest not. to ever play the position. So fundamental uh, to so much of what they did in the run game. So I, I, I don't know. I could see it like there's pluses. I think Kellen Moore can do a good job. I do like the mm-hmm. Barkley addition, but that's a pretty big negative. And I do have questions about Jalen Hurts as well. There it is. Okay. I was waiting. It took <laughs> you a long time mm-hmm. to build up the courage to say what we all knew you were really saying without actually saying it. Like this, no one has ever said, you know what, this great team, they're really going to take a step back because they lost their center. It's because you think the quarterback's not as good as we all thought he was a couple years ago. Tell the truth. Uh, sir, I have 15 minutes from first take yesterday <laughs> where I say exactly this about Jalen Hurts. I I already built up the uh, armor required to air this take in public. Oh, I mean, I think he's going to be yeah. better than the guy You're not going to get any fans in Philly. I, I, here, let me say this. Let's, this, this is... It's a little hot, but, you know, let's just get into it. Bill, Mm -hmm. I I started off yesterday by, you know, I was kind of enumerating some of the issues we saw with Hertz, obviously the struggles against the Blitz and whatnot, but also, you know, he was less dynamic as a runner. Mm -hmm. I thought some of his decision-making was a little bit dubious. Things, no doubt, enhanced by play calling. And I was on with uh, Stephen A. and Kimberly Martin, both of whom said, you know, 2022 MVP season, he was so amazing, whatever. But what's more likely... That that mm. season was an aberration, or pardon me, that that season was the norm, and he's just going to go right back to that, or that that season was the aberration. It does feel like making maybe the single biggest leap in completion percentage from year to year in NFL history might not be his true level of play. And I want to be clear, I think Chillin Hurts is a really good player. I feel like mm. we are... 
by having this conversation, it sounds like we this, think Jalen Hurts is, is this kind is of hard player. core he's for you, Eagle football fans. Player. Oh, yeah. The first thing debate was Jalen Hurts MVP. I just want to explain that. I also think, you know, I think I use a very good quarterback. Yes, but the infrastructure around Jalen Hurts a couple of years ago was excellent. He had two superstar receivers. The good news is they're still there. Running game wasn't necessarily great. I think he was the driver of the running game, Mm -hmm. and adding Saquon Barkley helps. But we're we're really not talking about the offensive line for the Eagles. And when they have disappointed, almost always it has been because the offensive line has fallen apart. There's always been injuries. Um, Blaine Johnson's been hurt, and he's already struggling with injuries this offseason. Um, they have a new right guard, and Mekhi Becton, who was already injured, who has a long track record of struggling to stay healthy. And I just want to say, I feel like sometimes during the offseason, people latch on to an anecdote to explain things, and it is not actually a good enough thing to explain. The fact that Jason Kelsey chose the guy who's going to replace Jason Kelsey does not mean they're going to get Jason Kelsey 2.0 at center. Like, that is not, you cannot just sub in another guy, even if Jason Kelsey picks him and expect to get Hall of Fame caliber play. And I know, like Dominique said, you don't normally talk about the center as a reason mm-hmm. why a team like the Klein. It's but huge. Teams don't normally have Hall of Fame centers right. in their mid 30s. The Eagles are an exception. Yeah. That changes a lot of how the Eagles are going to play on offense, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it's inarguable. I'm not arguing that they get better by moving on from Jason Kelsey but I do think that there are some positions that it is debilitating to try to coach around replacing center's not one of those positions left tackle right tackle one of those positions now I agree losing Kelsey's athleticism is going to change the dynamics of their running game I believe that they'll be able to call out protections someone will figure that out I don't think that that's uh, like they're going to get tricked on protections because Jason Kelsey's not there. They'll figure their, they'll figure that out. I do think that some of the pulling and his athleticism in the run game, they'll be lost. I don't think the tush push is going to be stopped because Jason Kelsey is not out there. But I think that taking even if you take certain run plays out of the offense because they were dependent on Jason Kelsey, Kelsey's ability. I think that's entirely different than not being able to do seven step drops because you don't have a tackle. You have to you can't let more receivers out into the route because you need extra protection. That's my only point is that losing mm-hmm. this particular player or this position is not a position that modern football is completely relying on. It's like saying you need if you're playing aggressive defense, you can't figure out how to survive without a corner. Yeah, these are things, there are certain positions that you cannot replace. And my point is not to say that Jason Kelsey isn't impressive. It's saying that modern football is not dependent on having an all-pro center. That's all. I don't disagree, but if that first tush push fails, Absolutely. I also want to point out, <laughs> We talk about the coaching getting better. We talk about the coaching, coaching getting, better. getting better. I just want to point out yeah, the Fangio. two coaches oh. that the Eagles are hiring yeah. Yeah. kind of got fired last year. Like, like Kellen Moore, I don't think he was the problem mm, with the Chargers. Actually, they're names that not. I've heard of and Howie Roseman selected them, so, <laughs> so. they're actually perfect hires, Bill. <laughs> yeah. So the, the thing is, mon frère. which you cannot – so that's the thing is that I – <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You, you still got first take brain. Um, the thing is, I think it's fair to be critical of both of these coaches and saying like Vic Fangio's history is not um, his recent history does not match up with his reputation. And the same could probably be said about Kellen Moore. But what you can't say is that they aren't improvements. That's the one thing you can't say. They're both improvements. True. Fair. So uh, on on oh, on Sean Desai though, I feel like like we have erased the Sean Desai like era from the Eagles history. Yeah. It was like Matt Patricia was there all year. Right. Fair point. We'll see. Matt Patricia we'll was the improvement. He was he was supposed to be the improvement. That's it's a tough Matt, spot. Matt to will be. fix this, guys. <laughs> Matt, Matt's got this. I I agree with Mina. I think that my hesitation is the fact that I don't think the Cowboys are that good. I think this division's pretty bad, and it might just be. A nine and eight Eagles team does decline and is still good enough to win the division. But I gotta be medium. I gotta pick somebody who was good last year for most of the year. I'm going Eagles to miss the postseason. Wow. Right, enough about the Eagles. Enough about my take. Eagles to miss. Wow. That is crazy. Nate Newton says the first. That is crazy, y'all. Wow. Eagle fans, are are your brains exploding right now? Are they exploding? Um. Yeah. So, would like to know your thoughts. The Eagles, are they missing the playoffs this year? <laughs> I might do it, King Dickbag. 
here, and so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my daddy. <laughs> 